Welcome to OnTargetHTML5.com. This is Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, we're actually going to be building a or creating a flip effect using the transition and the transform properties of CSS3. We're actually going to have a, an image or a graphic, a photograph, that's going to flip over when you hover over it and then give you some a title and text for that particular image or photo. And what I'll do is let's go ahead and move into our development environment and I'll show you the finished project. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of our presentation, get into our development environment and bring up my browser. And once we finish creating this effect, you'll actually have these photographs inside your browser window. As you hover over them, they're going to flip over. They'll give you a nice title for the photo and you'll have space to put actual text in there on the actual image itself. We're going to do four of them for the demonstration. Obviously, you can put in as many as you want. I've got these centered on my browser window. You can actually set them up floating so you could have them side by side. You could actually put an image gallery together. But this effect will work on all the images that you have tied to the effect through your CSS styles and glasses. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our development environment and create this interesting and unique effect using the transform and transition properties of CSS3. All right, so I'm in my development environment. I am going to go ahead and open up my Sublime Text. That'll be the text editor that I'll be using for this demonstration. And Google Chrome will be my browser. And my start files, I actually have a group of start files that I have to create this exercise. I have a basic HTML5 template, or a boilerplate template as I like to call it. And I've got um, a CSS file that I'm going to use called styles.css. They're both, the styles files is actually blank, and my start.html file is a plain boilerplate HTML5 document. Inside my browser window, I've actually just dragged that start.html file into the browser window from inside my directory. Now what I want to do is I want to go ahead and add a title to my head section. I'm just going to call this flip over effect. And I'm going to put an H2 title inside my document. So I'm just going to put in an H2 and call this the flip over effect. So we have a title for our page. The only reason I'm doing this, I want to actually confirm that we've got the right files loaded before we actually start writing our code. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. Great time for you to pause if you need to get these in. And again, this is a standard HTML5 boiler template. And I've got a blank styles.css file with the link to the file inside my HTML5 document. I'm going to go ahead and refresh my browser window. Just make certain I'm on the right page, which I am. Excellent. Now we're ready to start begin to begin to start writing our code. So in this tutorial, we'll be creating a flip over effect using HTML and CSS. Some of the additions to CSS3 have really given us a lot of opportunities to get very creative with some of the things we do on our site without having to rely on anything other than HTML and CSS. And I mean, it's opened up some really cool opportunities for us. The new properties in CSS3 gives us many opportunities to add interesting content to our sites. And again, we don't have to have JavaScript or anything external, just the HTML and CSS itself. The hover effect that we'll create with this exercise is just one of the many examples that we can create and one of the many tutorials that I have produced demonstrating these effects. There's quite a few tutorials that I've done on the transition and transform properties in CSS3 because there's so many things that we can do with them. All right, so the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add a container to the body element of my site. So inside there, I'm going to create a div. I'm going to give it an ID of container. And again, I do this with most of my sites. I create containers for all of my content. And I'm going to come down right below that H2 and go ahead and close out that div because I want to include everything inside of a container. I'm just going to add a few blank lines there. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes. Great time for you to get that into yours. And now what I want to do is I actually want to add a UL which is going to contain my image. So I'm going to come right down below my H2. I'm going to add an unordered list. I'm going to give my unordered list a class of flip. This is actually going to be a class that we're going to refer to many times in our CSS. And I'm going to come down a few lines and just go ahead and close out that UL tag. Let's go ahead and save those changes. Another good time for you to pause to get that typed in. Inside the UL, I want to put in an LI because I'm actually going to use a list item to actually contain my content inside this UL. And I'm only going to have one list element inside my UL. It's going to contain all my content because I want to use some of the new elements inside HTML5. And the first thing I want to use or the first new element I want to use inside my LI is a figure element. So I'm going to go ahead and put in figure, one of the new tags inside HTML5, come down a couple lines and then close that element out. 
take out that blank line. And then inside my figure, the first thing I want to add is an image. So I'm going to bring the image in that we're actually going to display on the screen. So I'm going to come inside the figure elements and I'm going to add an image with a path to my images. I've got an actual images folder. I've got five images for my demonstration. My images are 300 by 200 pixels. You should have a group of images as you're working through this exercise. And again, they don't have to be 300 by 200 pixels. I just have to be using that for my demonstration. You're going to see in the CSS where we actually refer to these sizes for the sizes of our boxes that we're going to use to contain our flip effect. Anyway, when I put my images, always remember to add your alt text. A big, big issue with SEO now is not having alt text will actually get you penalized points inside your SEO. I'm going to come down below the image and I'm going to add another new element in HTML5 and that's the fig caption element. So I'm going to put the fig caption in. Let me go ahead and pull out these blank lines. Inside my fig caption, the first thing I want to add is an H3. That's actually going to be the title for our image. And then I'm going to come down below that. I'm going to open up a P tag. I'm going to close my P tag. And inside the P tag, I'm just going to go ahead and put some lore, mipsum, some sample text that we're going to use for this particular demonstration. Hopefully you'll have your own sample text, or you can actually type in real text if you want to play with your real live images. Let me go ahead and pull out these lines. So now what I've got is I've actually created a UL with an LI included inside the UL. Inside my LI, I've got a figure element. Inside the figure, I've added my image, a fig caption element, and the fig caption contains an H3 and a paragraph element. Good time to save all these changes. Good time for you to pause to catch up where I'm at to get all this typed into your text editor. I am going to go in and refresh my browser window just to make certain we're getting everything included in our page. And there we go. We've got our first image. We've got some text. We've got a title and we've got our flip over effect title for our page. So again, in this demonstration, I'm using some brand new elements in HTML5. You should get used to using those. They actually do help you with your SEO and with the page uh, crawling of the search engines. It's better for targeting your styling also. We're actually going to use these elements. That's why I don't have a lot of classes in this particular demonstration. If you've done some of my previous demonstrations where we've done some stuff with the transform and transitions properties, you'll notice I used a lot of classes in those particular demonstrations. In this one, I decided to actually use a lot of the new elements in HTML5 so we can actually target the elements themselves. Not a lot of difference in the targeting other than the fact instead of creating those classes. Now we're actually going to target the elements. So let's go ahead and move on and start working on the CSS for our demonstration. Real quick, one of the things I do want to do actually into our HTML before we actually move into the CSS, I actually want to use a Google font inside of this particular demonstration. And the reason I'm doing this is Google fonts are becoming extremely popular. And I, if you're not aware of how to use them, I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate that right now during this tutorial. I'm actually going to open up a browser window with the Google Fonts website, https forward slash forward slash fonts.google.com. The font that I actually want to use for this one is actually a Source Sans Pro font. I actually like it because it's quite clean. You can actually add this by clicking this plus column. This is, by the way, the regular 400. You can actually see a sample sentence. If you want to look at some of the other available typefaces, you can look at the italic. The 600, 600 is going to be a little bit darker, all the way up to the 900. I actually want to use the 400 regular. I think it looks very nice and clean. I'm going to click this little plus button to select the font. It's going to open up this nice little window that's going to tell me how I can actually include this inside my application. It gives me the standard import if I want to import it, the styles to add to my CSS. You can actually customize this to if you want to also. I can actually go in here and select some other font types if I'd like them. I'm just going to use the standard font size. So I'm going to copy this link. Control C on the PC, Command C on the Mac. I am going to drop out of the website, go back into my HTML document, and right below my CSS sheet, I'm going to paste this link. So I've got it there. I'm going to save all those changes. I'm going to go back to the website because now I actually want to get how I reference it in my CSS. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this right here. Control C on the PC, Command C on the Mac. I am going to drop out the website, go into my CSS file. I'm just going to paste this at the top right now as a note because I don't want, I'm actually not there yet. So I'm just going to paste it in here as a note. And then I'm just going to put my comments 
multiply it just so it's commented out. So I know it's a note. This way, when I get to that point in my CSS, I can actually just copy it. I tend to do this quite often, by the way, when I'm working on sheets. If I'm going to get stuff I know is going to be external to the site, I'll paste it to the top of my CSS file so I can actually use it when I come to that point. I'm going to go ahead and save all the changes. I am now out of that particular browser window and we're back into our style sheet. Now I want to start adding the styles to my styles.css file. So I'm going to come down a line. The first thing I want to do is I want to take out the margins and padding. So I'm going to use the wildcard feature inside CSS. And I'm going to say my margins are zero and my paddings are zero for all the elements. And what I'm doing is I'm taking out the margins and paddings that by default are added by the browsers or the rendering engines. The next thing I want to do is I actually want to add that font to my body element. So everything that inherits from the body, which is everything that will be on our page, will actually have the font that we just imported. And it's font family source sans pro sans serif. Once I get that in, you can, I can actually take this note out if I want to. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. After the body element, I actually want to style my container. So again, I'm going to come right down by, below my body element. I am going to address the container ID. Wow, my formatting got kind of squirrely there. I'm going to contest or address my container ID with a width of 80%. Height is going to be auto. My background is going to be RGBA because I want to add a transparency to it. It's going to be 173, 216, 230, 0 0.5, which is going to give me a light blue background on my container. My margins are going to be zero top and bottom and auto left and right to go ahead and center that inside my browser window. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. Great time for you to pause if you need to get those in. I am going to refresh my browser window. And you can see now that we're actually starting to get some things appearing inside of our screen. The one thing I don't see, or no, no, we're good. I did want to remove that space from my RGBA. Let's go ahead and refresh my browser window. And now we can actually see the background. I was wondering why that hadn't showed up. Didn't realize I had a space there. All right, so right below my container, I actually want to address now, by the way, the container is this ID of the container we actually put into our body element right below it. Now I want to address the H2 that we've got set up as our heading. So I'm going to go ahead and add some styling for that H2. I'm going to come right down below my container and I'm going to put in H2 text align center and that should center this text in the center of our page. I'm going to do some additional styling to my UL. So right below the H2, I'm going to add UL with the margin of zero top and bottom, auto left and right, padding top 10 pixels, padding bottom 10 pixels and width is 30%. So I'm addressing now the UL that actually contains our image and our text. Once we complete that, I want to look at the LIs themselves and take out that list style. So I'm coming right below the UL and I'm going to add a styling for the UL LI that says list style none. I am going to save all those changes. Another good time for you to pause if you need to catch up and get those in. I'm going to go into my browser, refresh my browser window, and now you can see we're starting to actually get some shape to what we're doing here. Relax, it's even going to get better. Because now I want to start adding the styling for our effect itself. So I'm going to come down right below that ULLI. And I'm going to add my class of flip. And if you're not aware, the flip class is this class that we gave that UL. That pertains to everything that falls inside that UL. My LI, my figure, my image, my fig captions, my H3, my paragraphs. Everything falls within that flip class. And I'm going to say flip class. Your position is relative to the parent. Your width is 300 pixels. Your height is 200 pixels. Your overflow is hidden. Your margin is zero, top and bottom, and auto left and right. Then I'm going to look at the figure itself. And now we're actually talking about the image and everything that falls within that image. By the way, the figure includes, if you look, we actually include the image and the fig caption. So the figure is going to be positioned relative to the parent. And when you hover over it, I want my cursor to change to a pointer. And then I want to look at the actual image because now I'm going to say, okay, fig class figure image. I want you to display as a block. Let me scroll up just a little bit. Display as a block. Your position is relative. Your Z index is 10. So I'm moving that to the front now of anything that may be behind it. I'm sorry. Yeah, to the front of anything that may be behind it. Save all those changes. Great time to pause to type that in. I'm going to refresh my browser window and you can see that we're actually starting to see this now begin to take effect. 
All right, the next thing I want to do is we're going to move in and add some additional CSS for our flip figure fig caption, and it's going to get pretty complex, and that's our next piece. All right, so there's a lot to this next block. By the way, if you're hovering over your screen and wondering why nothing's happening, nothing should be happening yet, so do not despair. I'm actually going to grab this next piece of code. It's quite complex, so hang on. This one's going to be a heck of a ride right here. I'm going to put this in place, and I'm going to talk you through what we're doing. This is the flip caption, or the flip class, figure, fig caption. So now we're looking at everything that's inside the fig caption element of that HTML page. I want you to display as a block. Your position is absolute. Your z-index is 5. So we're moving it now behind our image. Box sizing is border box. Your padding bottom is 20 pixels. Your top is 0. Your left is 0. So we're positioning this in the very upper top left corner of that particular border box. The width is 100%, height is 100%, padding is 15 pixels, top and bottom, 20 pixels left and right. I'm giving you a background color of a medium turquoise, 72, 209, 204, and again with a transparency of 0 0.7. I want all the text inside this element to be text aligned center. My back face visibility is hidden. When the transform property is called, I want you to rotate 180 degrees and transition everything in a half of a second. So whenever we call the transition, everything's going to transition in one half second and it's going to transition or rotate Y 180 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. Good time to pause to get those typed in. I know there's a lot there. The next thing we're going to look at is the flip figure H3. We're actually going to style that H3 heading. I am going to come down right below where we just put in our flip figure fig caption. And I'm going to say flip figure H3, padding top, 5 pixels. Your color is pound 000, which is going to be black. This is the text color. Font size is going to be 18 pixels, and your text align is going to be center. And right below that, I want to do the paragraph. So I'm going to come down right below where we set up our H3, and we're going to set up our paragraph text. And it's going to be flip figure P. So in other words, class of flip in the figure, in the paragraph tag, padding top 15 pixels, display block, font size 12 pixels, line height 18 pixels, color pound 333. It's going to give ourselves a dark gray for the color of the text itself. And by the way, the color of our H3 is going to be black. And our text line is going to be justified for this particular paragraph. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. Good time to pause if you want to get those typed in. I am going to go in and refresh our browser window because now we don't see anything other than our image. And the reason being is we've positioned this figure and the fig caption now behind that image between the sizing, the padding, and this actual positioning that we've set right here. So everything now is positioned behind that image itself. And again, let's go ahead and refresh the browser, make sure everything's going as it should. It looks good. We've got our pointer coming in now. Now let's go ahead and actually set up the rotation. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at that class of flip, our image. So I'm going to come right below that. I'm going to say, in the flip class, figure image, I want your back face visibility hidden. And when transition is called, I want you to transition everything in one half a second. Now, when I go into the hover for that particular figure, I'm going to come right below that. And I'm going to say, flip a class, figure, hover, image comma, figure, hover, image. So when I'm hovering over that image with the pseudo class, and I actually have a class of hover, I want you to transform, rotate 180 degrees. So now we're actually, what we're doing is we're coming over here and we're rotating this 180 degrees as we hover over this image. And the last but not least, I want to actually add this fig caption. Flip, figure, hover. So again, when I'm hovering over that figure, fig caption, fig hover, fig caption, I want you to transform, rotate Y, zero degrees. So we're setting everything up now to rotate in opposite directions based on whether or not we're hovering over the image and the figure. If I save all those changes, great time to pause to get those in. Refresh your browser window. You'll notice now that when we hover over our image, it rotates. All right, so now when we get hover over our image, we get this nice rotation. We got that text, not only the title, but the actual lorem ipsum text that we put in there for that particular photo. When you move away from the image, it hover or goes back to its original position where you can actually see the image itself. I think this is a very cool effect. 
and it actually did not require a whole lot of CSS or a lot of HTML to get it to display correctly. And again, the beauty, no JavaScript, nothing but HTML and CSS to get this effect now to work with the CSS3 properties. I have tested this in numerous browsers and it works just fine and it's responsive. In fact, let me show you what I mean. Here we have it in Firefox, the exact same thing we just created. Let me go ahead and pull it up in Opera. And again, we're not using the beauty of this. I am not using any web, prefix, web prefixes. There's Opera. And even Internet Explorer, it's working well in. So the acceptance of the new CSS3 properties is really widespread now. It's getting very, very good. So it's pretty safe to use this stuff in your sites without using the web prefixes. That's why I haven't put them into my tutorials for this transformer transition property. So let's move in and, let, and add the rest of our images. Very cool, the widespread support that we're seeing now with the new properties in CSS3 and HTML5. I'm going to go back into the HTML file. What I want to do now is add the remaining images to this particular demonstration. I am going to copy everything inside that UL. I'm just going to select everything in the UL. Control C on the PC, Command C on the Mac. I'm going to come right down below the closing UL tag and just paste in another one. And all I need to do here now is change the actual image and the text itself. I'm just going to go to travel image two and I'm just going to say title for in, for our photo number two. I'm going to come right down below the UL again and put in a blank space and then put in my next image. Control V on the PC, Command V on the Mac. This is going to be for travel image three. And again, you could set these up any way you wanted to. I'm having them stacked. You could actually have them in a row, set it up as a image gallery. I'm going to go ahead and save all those changes. And I'm going to just do one more. So we have four images in the demonstration. Have them in an image gallery. You could actually have the image where you click on it and you go to a large scale image. I actually just did this just to demonstrate the flip, flip effect. But all the things that you normally do, you could actually do inside this HTML document. All right, so I've got four entered in. I am going to let you pause to catch up where we're at. And again, I just copied everything inside the UL. I changed my image path and I changed the title to the photo. Obviously, you'd want to change the entire title and you'd want to change the text as well as the image. I'm going to go ahead and save all the changes. I am going to go into my browser and refresh my browser window. And now we have four of those nice little images in there. And when we hover over any of the images, we actually get the display of the title and the text for that particular image. So I hope you enjoyed it. And again, it is fully responsive the way we've set it up. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, it's a great feature, a great little effect for the transform and transition properties in CSS3. I'll probably keep adding to this series because I'm always finding new things to do with these new properties in CSS3 and HTML5. I'm working on some really cool stuff with the Flexbox property in CSS3, which is now adopted on about 98% of the browsers that are currently in use. And Flexbox gives you some really interesting ways to lay out your pages using CSS3. I mean, the box model, the old floats, and all the things that we had to do to get things to lay out in the old days are getting ready to rapidly go away. With the Flexbox module, it's almost a thing of the past. Check out the Flexbox module tutorial. I actually have a series on the website called Mastering the Flexbox Property in CSS3, which goes through and takes you step by step through every property, every value, and we have nine projects that are actually included with that tutorial series. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial.